G'day folks, Jason from the Utter Farm here. We're actually on the Utter Farm property today. Exciting you, it's day one of the installation of the solar panel and the pipe work on the property to run our cell grazing system right across the whole property. As you can see, I've been chasing my tail all morning. We've had 140 mil of rain here in the last two months since we installed the solar post and the tank on the front of the property. That past parlum behind me, that past parlum grass, is six foot or roughly a metre and a half high. There's the poly pipe. That'll go on to that leg, the suction leg with a non-return valve. And as you can see, we we'll walk up further. This is where the electrical wiring, the harnesses and that starts, obviously out of the water. It's going to get wet in flood time, but it's going to be waterproofing. What Phil went and done now, because that electrical cabling has to be put in first. So he's gone through and put that down and he's tip the soil over top then they'll come back and they're gonna throw that poly pipe in on top of that that way if you ever dig down you're gonna be hitting the poly pipe before you be hitting the electrical cabling you know as you can see they've come through now buried that poly pipe and come through and leveled off that soil put it back in with a bobcat so we've had a setback for about two or three weeks. We had a couple of hundred mil of rain and it's just been absolutely boggy out here. So this is... Before Christmas they installed the pipe work up to the tank on half the property before that rain so the, as you can see they've done this section here goes right down to where the guys are working across the road into that paddock it goes all the way along that paddock right down across out back onto the road way down to that power point there you probably can't see it beyond that dam down through the creek crossing and up to the river and today they're starting at this tea branch here that they finished in Christmas. It's going to be a bit rocky, so I expect a few delays. The boys have done pretty well. They've got to excavate this section because there's a fair bit of slate rock until they get to that ironbark tree about there. Sorry, that one there. And then it gets back to dirt. Then you jump on the bobcat and use a trencher. So they've got one riser already put in with the turf valve. The next one's probably down where the excavator is. We're going to have a look now what they're doing. I know they've hit a sheet rock down there, so it's not going to be pretty for the excavator driver for about 40 metres, I'd say. And like I mentioned, that's where the other turf rise, the, the rise is going there, in the turf box. And right there, you can see the slate rock. You can hear him trying to get through it. So he needs to get down the minimum of that foot for that turf valve to go in. So I think we should be right there. At least I know. Tell you what, that sound's not good. Doing it hard. <laughs> As you can see, this is what we've got to contend with. This sheet rock, there's a plate of it. Pretty well goes right across where I need to put this watering system. So what I try to do is pick sections where I'm hoping the sheet rock. So obviously that's there. As you can see, this is where the excavators, the orange line that he's following, the boys have put that down. There's a few rocks here, but then it starts sheet rock again on the other side so I'm hoping and praying that there's not too much along this section here then from there they've got to go under that fence bit of sheet rock down there and then it's all the way down that, that mode section we done that probably um, three days ago it was about a foot two foot high after that big range out of a couple of hundred mil I've had to remow that with a zero turn and remark the cross it so go all the way down goes all the way past the shed all the way down to the bottom fence line which is close to the creek so i think this section here is roughly eight nine hundred meters there's about i think there's 14 turf valves and rises to go in this section 
they've come under that fence now it's been about an hour so as you can see they've got another riser right there where that timeless four foot t-post is as you can see you hit that slate rock right there looks like right there I've only got about a hundred mil it's going to be interesting when they bury that in 100 mil below the pipe hit too much pugging I don't know what the cows are going to do to that pipe but it's 100 mil under the ground I'm not going to rip that anyway it's going to be hard to rip with a rock and I don't plan ripping on this property the only thing I'll probably do is use a cedar so maybe four to six inches but I won't be going across that rock area anyway because I won't be penetrating through a cedar through that rock so as you can see they've come under the fence here it's probably 150 200 mil maybe anywhere between four and eight inches below the ground it's not optimal but you can't do anything when that rock is the way it is so it comes all the way down to here there's still rock all the way through here they've got fairly good depth from about there that's about oh, about 600 mil so it's at about a foot and a half two foot as you come around the corner they've hit another big rock just there that'd be six inches below ground level same again there that one's only probably four foot below ground level then after that rock you can see they've hit good soil after that it's been a little bit wet after all the rain but that goes down probably 600 all the way down to where it's starting to set that riser in there now so i'm assuming he's going to go to the trencher soon as you can see we We've just changed over now out of the rocks from the excavator to the bobcat. Here's one of my blue crosses. The boys have just completed the installation of this one here. They're the timeless posts I'm putting beside them so I know where they are. I noticed a couple they put in before the cows have rubbed them over so I've got to go move them and put them in firmer ground but eventually I want to get the app so I can GPS locate these rather than have the post. We can walk through the paddock on the phone and locate them if I ever need to in the long grass. The trench is getting along all right. We're worried it's going to be a bit muddy and boggy and it's going to choke up the trencher, but it seems to be going all right. The only issue I had with the excavator, as you can see here, this trench, the wall is about a foot wide and the turf cover, the turf valve is about a foot wide too. We've done some in the other paddock down near the river with the excavator, the small 300 mil bucket. And what happens, we had a heap of rain and that turf cover sunk down 100 mil. The issue with that is if I ever, when it gets soil across on top of that valve cover, I won't be able to find it because it's 100 mil. So I've got to go around and dig them all up and then raise it up back to the ground level. Otherwise, I'm going to lose those where they, with the location of those. Whereas with the trencher, as you can see, the width is only 150 mil. Because the turf cover is 300 mil wide, they can cut out a recess on the ground here down the depth of that cover. And that creates a sort of base of table either side. It stabilizes it and it doesn't allow it to sink, which means I don't have to fix it up later. But it appears we've jumped back on the excavator. I think it's a bit boggy. It must be choking up the digger. So, we're going to have to so we've gone back to the excavator and you can see why the ground's that wet from that couple of hundred mil of rain. It's choking up the trencher with mud. It's way too wet. So we've had to opt to go back with the excavator. So the orange line on the ground, which turns blue down there because you're running into orange paint. The reason why that line's there, that fluorescent line is there, as you can appreciate, the bobcat and the excavator work backwards. So he's got to have a definitive line when he's digging the trench he can work on. Rather than turn around all the time to find out where he's got to dig, he's just digging out in front of the excavator. You can see the orange line as he's reversing. He can keep that under the center of the excavator. It's getting towards the end of the day now. They've made it down to here. That would be close to 600 meters. I'm not sure what that is in miles or feet. They've got eight risers and turf valves put in along this stint there's 13 in total what they're going to do now is bill's jumping on the bobcat 
and he's going to push all that soil back into this trench because you don't want the cows all the bulls walking in there tonight because that's 600 deep that's about two foot deep down there they're not breaking a leg and we've got a couple of young calves only a few days old wandering around this paddock too and they'll definitely have an issue if they fall in there with their legs breaking a leg or possibly not even getting out so we're pushing it in for the safety of the animals and also if it rains overnight you don't want this trench filling up with dirt sorry filling up with water because it's going to be makes it very hard tomorrow to push the soil in this is going to be the troublesome area so this is where that rock and shale was a couple of this bit of this section of this pipe's only four inches under the ground so what they've had to do is they've had a stockpile of soil on the property so they've topped that up with soil they didn't want us to go straight back in with these rocks in case it presses down and either punches the punches the poly pipe or the pressure of the rocks as it's going down being run over could could kink the pipe so they've gone in with fresh topsoil and it's pushing it over the top it's about about an inch or so of fresh topsoil and then this stuff's going on top what they were doing previously is as they were laying these lines when they push the soil in the bobcat would go back over with its tracks and push the soil down the issue here is the soil being so wet and clay they're worried that it's going to go down and close that pipe up squeeze that pipe together pinch that pipe and resist the water so what they're doing now is it is piling up with soil like they did at the front of the property and let the weather and the elements and the rain slowly sink that down around that pipe and has any surplus material in say five months time I'll just come along with the bucket on the excavator on the tractor sorry and I'll just smooth that out and get rid of it then or any hollow spots same thing get a bucket bright and early start this morning just down there you can see where we backfilled a late yesterday afternoon with that bucket sitting they started there they trenched it down here with the excavator all the way down to this y point or t point and as you can see fills down there now with the bobcat in the trench digger on he's putting a line underneath that fence for me so i can sell graze them on the other side of that fence and now trench it down there and if i turn around here the boys after this y They've gone down there. The boys are at the very end there now. I've got a turf valve and a riser to go in there, right down the very end of the fence, so that way we can graze on the other side of the fence down to the creek. There's one to go into that tree right there, and there's one to go right here on this corner. We're on the homeward stretch now. We've got about 100 metres, which is about 330, 350 feet to go. So this is where the last of it is in line here where that four foot timeless post is is where they done before Christmas before we got all that rain and the grass have grown over and as you can see it's settled in now I'm gonna to have to come back there's a few areas where it's sunk in so I've just got to get some topsoil and fill all that in so that way I know there's some about a foot deep you just don't want the cows going in there and breaking their legs so this is the finished product I put the timeless post roughly two foot off foot and a half two foot that allows me to drive the tractor down here it's all right if a wheel runs over that it's not going to compress it down because you're distributing the load over the whole tractor and also when that soil packs down that's going to be tight but i just took it a foot and a half off so the wheel majority of the wheel will be between that turf cover and the post that way i'm not directly driving on top of it but it doesn't hurt once it is fully compact you can drive over top of those with the tractor otherwise i wouldn't be putting them in the middle of the paddock so that's coming along nicely so this is the last stretch now it goes all the way down there outside that barbed wire there's a timeless fence i just newly erected the turf valve goes down there and then it goes down that tree line there's a creek You've got to go across the creek and then about 30 meters the other side of that there's another turf valve and that's to feed to water i should say all the animals when i sell graze them on that five acres on the other side of the creek they've got their watering point
We're on the second last riser and turf valve cover now. Because it's been so wet, we've had to use the excavator the majority of the last two days. Not so like what that means, cover. when the boys are now putting these valve covers in, like I mentioned yesterday, that valve cover sitting over there is probably the same width as this bucket on this trench. So they have to make a bed now on the bottom of that for that valve cover to sit on. Beforehand, when the trencher was used, it was only like 150 mil wide and the boys would shovel out spoon either side of the dirt and they would make that base for this turf cover to sit on. So if I roll a turf cover over, when it's 150 mil wide, the boys were just spooning out in the ground. Oh, it'd probably be a third each side and that gave it a bed to sit on, so solid, so it wouldn't sink. But with this being so wide 300 they have to make a solid bed in the bottom and packed it as the best they can otherwise when they put the cover on a ground level with all the rain and sinking down there's a good chance of it sinking below the ground level and i'll have to come back at a later date and raise them up hence why they've got the bricks now they're putting them in the base there to give that support for that cover to sit on it's a lot easier because that's i think it's better 10 mil base on the bottom of that cover and in the soil, it's got more of a chance, not more of a chance, it will sink down. Where it's got a good base of those bricks to sit on, highly unlikely it's going to sink maybe 10 mil. There's just whatever dirt is underneath that's going to compact. If that's pretty compact, the boys stand on it, it shouldn't sink too much. I think the trench we made 600 deep. Majority of the property is 600. It's just where we hit rock yesterday, I think four inches was the uh, minimum. But I don't plan ever seeding or even this plowing up there. And I'll, like I said, I'm not going to end up ripping the property at all. So I want to not disturb the soil. It'll be zero till. The only till I'll be doing is eventually getting a seeder. And I'll only be going three or four inches in the ground with a disc plow straight down, drilling seed directly behind, and then to cover over. But I won't be doing it that area yesterday, four inches. It's, there's too much rock up there. But here, that's why I've asked to go 600 mil down. So at least I know I've got 600 mil if I ever want to do something down the track to play with. But I don't plan ever tilling, but it's good to have that depth anyway. I tell you what, that was only square, boys. You're definitely worth more money, You're worth weight in gold. Hear that, Glenn? These boys need a pay rise, mate. So the lads have got it where they want it now. Took a bit to get that bottom base set up and they got, now they got the turf cover on the rise is obviously in there and now it's sitting on the bricks. Put a shovel across, perfect level with the ground. I give them the best soil to work with. You see all this clay? It's nice and loose. It's easy to pack around this turf cover. That's a joke. It's, it's hard as rock, it's clay. It's going to be uh, fun to get some loose soil to try and make it cleanly around the top of that cover for me. But I'm sure the boys will uh, do their best. And we'll come back and have a look once they've done that. Phil's still going down that way. He'll be going across that creek in a minute. He was there. Phil, the excavator driver, was up right and early this morning. He come out and finished off this trench just so when the boys started at 7.30, they could lay this last bit of pipe that I mentioned yesterday. This is the last 100 metres or 300 foot. Phil had a little dug by the time they got here. The boys are just laying out the pipe now. We'll go down and have a look. This is where they had to go across the creek crossing down here. Tried to get it across with a tractor and slasher few months ago before that rain but because it goes through the creek it's a bit of a sharp drop and I got bogged and it's a bit of a mission I had to unhitch the slasher pull it out with a four wheel drive enough to get the tractor around and back out and then try to hook it up again it's a bit of a mission it took me like two and a half hours the time I got a little sword and jacked it up and got it back on the tractor so he's out crossing there you can see how boggy it was he wasn't going to take the yeah, you see the water, that's that's the creek running down there. So we dug it down, gone down probably 600 mil down the bottom of that creek, just in case I've got to put a pipe there down the track. Wasn't going to bring the bobcat down here because it's not a skid steer, it's only got the wheels on it and it would have bogged for sure, so we've done it all with the excavator. This is the last watering point across this other side of the creek. I haven't grazed before because I haven't set up the cell system and I don't want them, the cattle in the water drinking out of the creek so this all this 300 foot just goes to one watering point just so when i put the electric fence in i can 
block them out of the creek won't be drinking out of there so the watering point's right at the far end so that's the last of the turf valves and the risers to go in and the boys are finished you just got to come back and hook up the solar program that fill up the tank and load the line so that's it very last one to go in so we'll keep you posted on this when they fill the line and I'll show you when it's finished I think Paul's going to have a bit of a mission there I think he's trying to lay his pipe in and pull all that dirt in by hand I think it'd be easy using the excavator but I'll get off camera and I'll have a word with him he's the supervisor you think he'd use the excavator rather than uh, only joking he looked up at me then I don't think he heard me which is probably good righto guys so have a good morning have a great afternoon and a terrific evening wherever you're watching this from and we'll catch you later